So if you're not looking at the camera at all, you're just okay. looking talking okay. back and uh and no need to look at the camera. We're rolling. Okay. Hi Pat. Hi Peg. How are you doing today? I'm very good. That's good. Uh, we're going to start off kind of getting some historical facts down, okay. you know, the basics first. All right. Would you please give me your full name? Pat O'Connell. Yeah, well, it's, and your middle name? Uh, J. I use the letter J. Just J. Uh, J, Does yeah. have a, a significance to it? Mm, no. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Mm. That's interesting. How was your name chosen? Were you named for someone? I guess I was named for my uncle. I had an uncle, Pat. And uh, I guess I was named after him. Also, I was like born in March, so I guess it's close to St. Patrick's Day, so they figured it was appropriate to call me Pat yeah. or Patrick. Yeah. You know? yeah. What part of Ireland are you from? Uh, I'm from a little fishing village uh, way down in West Cork, about six, seven miles south of Skibrain. Fishing village called Castle Townsend. It's uh, like halfway between Bantry and uh, Kinsale along the coast. Okay. And where? When and where were you born? I was born right in Kessel Townsend, on March 8, 1942. Okay, and were you born at home? Yep, okay. born at home. Born at home, and do you have siblings? I have one brother and one sister. Older brother? An older brother, he's living in England, I got a sister. Uh, her and her husband are retired in the home place. They were in England for years and they retired back home. But they're home now, yeah. in the house where you were born? Yes. It's a lot different today, but it's been all renovated and everything else. Yeah. What are their names? They live in... No, what are their names? Oh, name. Uh, Anne and John Daly. Okay. Uh, were your grandparents from the same area? Very same area, yes. Both yeah. your grandparents? Your both grandparents from both, both in the same area. Okay. I don't remember. The only one I remember is uh, my grandmother on my mother's side. The rest of them were gone before I was born. How about your mother? Was she from that area? She's that area, right, born within a half a mile of where we lived. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And what was your mother's maiden name? M Margaret. No, her maiden name. Oh, Ma Collins. 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 Collins, yes. Okay. Mm. And did she have a, an occupation outside of the home? No, she was mostly a housekeeper, homekeeper okay. all the time, you know, taking care of us, I guess. You know, that was it. My father worked. And, and what was, was his occupation? He was a farm laborer. On your own farm? No. Okay. I, he worked for this uh, large uh, estate owned by uh, Somerville's. And uh, he worked there most of his life. And who were the Somerville's? Uh, Somerville's go way back 15th to 16th century. They came from um, northern England or southern Scotland. And I, I think they were like Episcopalians. And um, it's... Uh, they were actually driven out of England. There was some kind of a, a war going on there with the Church of England and with the with Episcopalians or something like that, some kind of a dispute. And one of the some of us left and with his wife and two kids went came to Ireland and they settled in Castle Townsend. And uh, they became farmers and things like that. But then in the early 1800s, one of his descendants, Thomas Somerville, became a very rich man. He was a merchant, uh, working in merchant shipping. Did a lot of work with the West Indies and shipping in Newfoundland and stuff like this. Became a, and uh, he built a place called Drashan House, which is the homestead ever since of the of the uh, Somervilles. And they have the big farm and estate around there and everything else. And that's what my father worked on. He worked there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you ever work in there? Yes, I did. You did. I did. I worked for one of the descendants of Thomas. I guess he'd have been my great grandson. His name was. Um, Desmond Somerville. And what kind of work did you do for him? Oh, we did all kinds of work you know, in the summertime, saving hay and uh, doing beet, thinning beet and mangles and turnips and, you know, all kinds of farm work, you know. And, what um, is a mangle? I hear the term. A mangle is something like a sugar beet. You know, the sugar beet is long root that grows in the ground. Well, a mangle is the same thing, but uh, they pulp it up and they feed it to cattle and horses. Oh, yeah, so it's it's bigger than a turnip. It's long. It's a long root, okay. whereas turnip is round. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you f have any? Did you have any kind of farming around your house? Did you do oh, it yeah. on your own? Oh yeah, yeah, own? yeah. We did. Yeah, yeah we sort of planted all our own um, vegetables and potatoes and everything. My father was constantly working in the evening time. You know, he had all kinds of stuff growing. Yeah. yeah. 
we rarely had to buy anything, really, either, you know, except outside of meat. And did your, did your mother do the churning and the baking and all that kind well, of Well, no, we didn't have any cows. Okay. We didn't have any cows, just, you know, to only like to, we had only an acre or two, and we didn't have any cows. We did, did uh, we, bought, we bought the milk and stuff like that, vegetables and stuff like that. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, when did electricity come to your town? Hmm. I guess it was uh, sometime in the 50s, the early, fi about 52 or 53. I remember it was, and it was very odd because it was snowing the same evening as they actually turned it on, which was very rare down where we come from. You might get a half an inch of snow every now and then, but that's about it, and we've gone that now. But I remember the evening that they turned on the electricity, it was actually snowing that evening. And I'd say it was 52 or 53. Wow. Mm -hmm. What was that like for your family? Were you all together oh, when it happened? That was like a whole new thing, you know, like everybody was scared of their life, you know, like, of, you know, oh, don't touch anything, you'll get killed, you know, like, and then all we had was just, I think, two plugs and uh, light in each room, and that was it, you know, like, you know, start, uh, start off. But um, it was like, besides, having to light the old oil lamp, the old uh, kerosene lamp every night, and having candles and everything else was like uh, a godsend. Was there a sense of danger of having electricity in the house? Well, you know, like, you heard, you heard so many things happening, you know, fires and people get electrocuted and stuff like this. And my mother especially was, you know, like, scared, you know, like, you know. Especially every now and then you'd blow a fuse and you had to change a fuse, and oh my God, you know, like, you know, you needed somebody who knew about electricity to change a fuse. You just kind of change <laughs> yeah, the fuse yeah, yeah, you know. Well, it's got to be a huge change. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but uh, it was, it was an experience. We got used to it after a while, you know. Like it was like second nature after six months, you know. Yeah. But um, it, I remember it being turned on. I remember before the electricity, like having to my father reading the paper at nighttime with a with a lamp, you know, like and it, it was, it was. Um, I guess it was simple times, but it was, you know, they carried on. They did okay. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. What type of a house did you have? What was, what we had a very small house. It was actually like a cottage. They called it a laborer's cottage. Uh, it was two bedrooms, a kitchen, and a living room. That was it. No bathroom. Bathroom was, was everything was outside. Oh, yeah. outhouse? Outhouse, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's it, yeah. Yeah, well, that's pretty common then, I'd say, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what was your What was your mother's? Oh, I asked you about your mother's maiden name. Uh, so your your house where it was set was it set in the country or in a town? Yeah, in the country. We were like this village that I said Castle Town, so we were yeah. maybe about 100, 150 yards outside the village. Okay. Yeah. Right. And we'd be like six miles from Skibreen. So that would be the big town that you. Yeah, went that was the big the town that you went shopping for and everything else. Okay. Yeah. How many people lived in your home? Five of us. You didn't have any relatives, no, no God, grandparents no, no. or anything? No, no, there was no room for them. <laughs> if you were standing in the front door of your house uh -huh. and, and looking out, mm -hmm. what would you see out in front of you? you Back then, my father was, um, he had hedges growing all over the place, the front of the house. And then there was a garden, and he had apple trees and raspberries and strawberries and gooseberries and everything else. And then was you know, the roadway in front of that. At the other side of the roadway was a huge, big lawn, like, the Somerville zone, the Somerville estate was at the other side of the road. Oh. Yeah. And if you went to the top of that lawn, then you looked out right on the ocean. Wow. Mm. Beautiful, huh? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Um, describe an Irish sky to me from your uh, youth. An Irish sky. What did the sky look like when you were a kid? Oh, God, I don't know. I remember, you know, like sunny evenings, nice sunny evenings and everything else. I don't remember growing up, you know, like they talk about so much rain and stuff like that in Ireland, but I always remember like uh, working in the fields, you know, and making hay and stuff like this and uh, saving the corn and stuff like that. Uh, a nice sunny days, you know, like I guess it did rain quite a lot there too, but it was the evenings, the, you know, the long evenings, especially in the summertime when it didn't get dark until 11 o'clock at night time, you know. And if you really got a real nice evening, it never really got dark. Like you could see if you, what I said now, up on the lawn, if you went out, looked out towards the ocean, you could always see that little rim of light oh. along the ocean where actually there was never complete darkness. And then it started getting bright again like at uh, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, yeah. you know? 
And uh, it was great because you had these long days in our house on the inside. I guess everybody else had them the same way. We had shutters on the windows that you closed on the inside, not on the outside, on the inside that you closed. Because otherwise you couldn't go to sleep on the bright, the bright evenings when we were kids. Right. Hmm? And you had to be up early in the morning. Yeah. They well, had to get up. to bed yeah. at some point. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, it does, you know, if you didn't have those shutters, you could, it would be like sleeping in the middle of the daytime. How about the stars at night? Well, the stars, especially in the wintertime, stars would be in a frosty night. Oh my God, that was beautiful. We used to we used to hunt rabbits and stuff like this. You go out in a, a real frosty night, and those stars were like glimmering, you know, like you could twinkling, you know. They were really great. You could see everything. Yeah. yeah. And especially on a moonlit night, like full moon. Oh my God, it was like getting up in the middle of the day. Yeah. yeah. Really bright. Yeah. It was really great. You don't really get it like here when you in a a built-up area where you get street lights and everything else, you you can see the moon, the full moon, stuff like that, but you really don't get the full effect of it. Yeah. You know, if you go up in the country, you do. But even then, you still have lights, ambient lights, yeah. not so yeah. much there. And I don't like that. Um, what kind of things did you do as a kid on a daily basis? What was a, an average day like? Well, outside of school, then you came, uh, well, I, I was born like in 1942, and uh, things were kind of tough, you know, like and to make ends meet and stuff like this, you had to do certain things. You, know, you had to work like, and, and from an early age, from six or seven years of age, we used to go to work for this guy, Somerville. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you got some money, you turned it over to your mother, you know, and um, uh, a lot of the times was spent doing things, working, working in the field, working in the garden and in the evening with my father, you know, and uh, um, watering the plants and stuff like this. So, uh, we'd then, you know, we'd get time off and we'd have a game of football or something like that, you know. Or uh, we used to go down to the village and there'd be guys, there was a, in the square in the village and there was always somebody there and they'd be playing pitch and toss and stuff like this or tossing around a football or something, you know. What's pitch and toss? Uh, you know, like you get pennies, you know, like you bet on them, you know, like, you know, what, you flip tail? them up heads or tails and stuff like that, yeah. yeah. Or sometimes you do pitch, you know, you put a, a rock or something on 20 feet away from you. Whoever be closest to the rock, you know, like you know, Got pitching, pitch, pennies. pitching the penny, they'll, they'll win everything. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was always somebody, you know, doing something. Then uh, we we're quite close to the ocean, so we used to go fishing as well. You know, and we used to go fishing. My father used to go fishing off the rocks with a with a, a rod and a line, right off the rocks. What kind of fish did you catch? Uh, mackerel. And you catch, used them. You yeah. Brought them home. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You eat them. Yeah. Yeah. How about, do you have any memory of, of the war? Because you were born, you were pretty young. No, were I don't have any memory of the war at all, no. Um, no, I don't have any memory of that. It was after that. I remember, I remember, the, the, you know, like, the only thing about the war I remember was that there was a shortage of certain things, especially tea. Mm -hmm. And my mother had a sister here living in New York. And every now and then we'd get these cans full of tea, you know? And all the neighbors would know because the mailman knew what was in the package mm -hmm. and he'd tell everybody else and they'd be all over my mother's house having tea, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And um, tea was mostly, the th was, there was shortage of other stuff as well, but tea was the only thing I guess she could send with those, uh, you know, that you didn't have to uh, freeze or you know, right. keep cool or something like that. Right. But she's got these big, big cans of tea, you know? And it was great. No, but um, that was about one of the things that I remember, and then also there was things were rationed. I remember her with the, going shopping with the with the coupons, you know, like for different things. Cigarettes were rationed and stuff like that. You know, and of course back then everybody smoked in Ireland. Yeah. You know. And the postman had a lot of control over that, didn't he? Oh yeah. He, with the rationing and yeah, turning yeah, in to yeah, get yeah. your things. Postman knew everything. Yeah. He knew everything. Yeah, because uh, you know, there'd be a letter from my aunt in America, you know. And, he said, he'd look at it, you know, oh, you got a few dollars today, he'd say to my mother, you know, that my, my aunt would be out to send you a few dollars. Was he able <laughs> to open it up or just... No, he wouldn't he open it, he'd just, you know, like, he'd know be that guessing was, at it. Sometimes yeah. he'd be right, sometimes he'd be wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what was your school like? School was a two-room school. Uh, from infants at five years to the third grade was one room, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Mahoney's uh, uh, thought in it, or over there they call him Manny, and uh, then from 
fourth grade on uh, until you're 14 years of age, you, there was a, a man teaching in the other room. And all like, she had like five classes in the one room, teaching five classes at one time. One would be doing writing and the other ones would be doing some reading and some more would be studying geography on the map. And, and they had it all, you know, it worked pretty good, you know. I guess not as efficient as they are today. How many, how many would be in a classroom? How many children in each one of those classrooms? I think in another class that I was in, I think there was 18. And 18, that was 18 5 year olds to 10 year olds? Oh, no, no, every one class. Every one class, like, you know, like, of uh, the first, oh, you know. And she'd have five 18. classes of 18. Oh, wow. Yeah. In the same room? Yeah, in the same room, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That must have taken a lot of control. Yeah. Well, some of the classes would be smaller than 18. Yeah. But that was, I guess, Anyway, between 14 and 18 was the average class. Wow. Yeah. So I, I can't even imagine trying to keep little kids busy while yeah. you're trying to. She used to. Wow. She, she used to, yes. Yeah. And how did you get to school? Walk. And how far was it? A mile. Yeah. Exactly a mile. Yeah, not too bad. Mm. When you got older, were you able to ride a bike? No, we never had a bike going to the uh, regular, what they call the national school. Afterwards, then I went to high school, and that was like six miles. I had a bike going to high school. How far did you go right through to your leading cert in that school, in the yeah. national school? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then yes. did you go on from there? No. 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 That was it for school until I came here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what did you do then when you were finished with school there? Did you, what kind of job did you have? I worked for this guy. He was a carpenter. Well, he was actually a jack of all trades. He'd do anything, roofing houses, anything, you know, like. And um, I worked with him for about, I guess, most of it, almost a year. And um, then in uh, 1960, my uncle came home from America. And he was home for two months, I guess. So I asked my mother if she spoke, talked to him, see if he could get me out here. And she did. And he, he sent down all the papers and everything else. And uh, the following July, I came out here. So was that kind of in the back of your head always that you would eventually? Live it probably, it, well, it probably was.